See, because almost all of you, if someone walked up and said, hey, if, I'll give you this A7R3 if you shoot a wedding, how much of you would say yes? <laughs> but you don't think about it that way. I think it takes that kind of hunger for you to get it. When am I gonna make $3,500 on a Wednesday in January? Oh, you can't make money off of social media? I make money off of social media like crazy. That's the other thing, don't be old in the room. You can't control your age, but you can control your mindset. And stop making excuses. Stop saying it's your artistic expression. That's so stupid. So when I watch that, I'm like, there's nothing I won't do. I'll work. I stopped eating. I stopped eating trash. Um, it's, I've lost 93 pounds, maybe 94 by now. It's talk about, talking about anger, right? I went over to Europe and, and in England, they're very blunt. My Rotolite light friends will tell you. And uh, uh, they turned to me and just said, wow, look at all those M&Ms you're packing in. And you know, I'm, it's not like in America where we're much more careful about saying that stuff to people because you'll get a fist in the face if you do. Um, they were just very brutal. And so I got pissed off and I said, if you guys watch my video with Kristen, the Sony fangirl video, I say in the video, this is the fattest you'll ever see me again, ever. I got angry. So that was May of 2016. So in a year and almost a year and a half, and it would have been a lot faster if I wasn't traveling. The travel makes it hard, really hard. But like we're in the, I did an interview with Sony today and they had donuts in the room and did I, did I eat the donuts, ladies? Not a single one. No, nope. no donuts, no donuts. And I'm, I'm brutally honest with myself. I am so honest with myself. I want that donut. Well, I want to be thin more than I want the donut. I'm also brutally honest about the fact that I represent two great brands. You want to be a movie star? Get in shape. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'm not saying I'm a movie star. What I'm saying is if you're in the image business, understand you are in the image business. Not to mention the fact if you're, if you're overweight, and I'm not making fun of overweight people. I've been one my whole life. I just understand the pain that is associated with being overweight and how real you have to get with yourself if you're going to actually go on that journey of losing the weight. It's a real, real journey. It, the gym is great, but you got to be watching what goes in your mouth. I mean, you are what you eat is the most simple and true statement in the world as you take a bite. I love that. Grapes. They're grapes. I love it. Even better. So you're going to become a nice looking grape. Okay. <laughs> but the point I'm making, guys, is, is all of what I talk about, all about what I live and breathe and do is all about making it real and turning that magic thought, that magic belief into reality. Um, who has influenced you and who do you follow? For my work? Inspiration or anything. When I first got into it, uh, Jerry Guiones, who's a great wedding photographer. Yervant is another great wedding photographer. They influenced me. There's a lot of great photographers. We have Mira Coase back here. She's a wonderful photographer. I did a baby shootout with her today. Another Sony artisan. Um, and you know, if you've ever listened to her stories, she's got some crazy stories. Crazy stories. Stories where people would give up. I'm going to follow people who are doing what I want to do, whatever the vocation is, whether it's a Steve Jobs or whoever else. You know, and I will say this much, a lot of the successful people in life, when they, you talk to them or people talk about them, they were very hyper-focused. I mean, they went for it. Norman Rockwell was a big inspiration for me. My earlier work looked, I, I really found a lot of inspiration by watching his, I loved his humor. I loved how he would set up a scene and set up a story within that scene. I, I really loved what he did there. You know, Jerry Gionis has a fun quote. He says something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing, if you're following, you're not leading. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of truth to that. If you're constantly following someone, even though I thank you for following me, <laughs> but if you're constantly following someone and you never ever try to transition into that leading, you know, if I was born a lion, I would, as soon as I was big and strong enough, I would be cha challenging for the pack. Now, how did you learn the proper like, composing and directing? Like, how do you want someone to stand, whether it be a model or a, a wedding couple? 
I break photography down into a simple matter of does it look good or does it not look good. We get caught up in so many mathematical equations. It's really a big um, obstacle for a lot of photographers. They'll hear the sunny 16 rule, they'll hear all these rules, and they're like, oh my gosh, they're all in my head, I can't figure them out. So when I will learn posing, I, I looked at it and I'd say, man, she looks weird. Why? I don't know, but she looks weird and I'm going to fix it. Right? And, 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 and stop making excuses. Stop saying it's your artistic expression. That's so stupid. It's not. Well, I'm an artist. It can be whatever it wants to be. No, it can't. That's like a chef saying he can make nasty cake and you're just going to eat it because that was his interpretation. It's idiotic. It really is. It's stupid. If you're brutally honest with yourself, no. Your cake can be different. It can be strawberry filled, chocolate, lemon, whatever. You can do your own twist on the frosting or whatever else. But if that cake is nasty, it's nasty. Now what do we do when we, when we screw up our lighting? What do we change it into? Black and white, right? The big fix for all failures. Okay? I love black and white photography, but we just shouldn't do it by accident. That's the other thing. Don't be old in the room. You can't control your age, but you can control your mindset. Oh, well, I don't want to do Facebook. Congratulations. You're not going to connect with middle-aged people. I don't want to do Instagram. It's too much work. Okay, congratulations. Don't connect with young people. I don't want to do YouTube. Not connecting with young people. My models, my assistants in the room, in their 18, 19, mid-20s, they book, live everything off of social media. And so do all their friends and family. So if you guys don't understand that, you're fooling yourselves. You know, the, 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 oh, you can't make money off of social media. I make money off of social media like crazy. I had the owner of, a, not the owner, a representative of a very, very, very big camera store company sit down in a meeting with me and tell me nobody makes money off of social media. I laughed in his face. I said, I make a lot of money off social media. Well, how do you, you don't like post a video and then you get people to actually, there's not a capture ratio, absolutely. I put out a video, you guys book workshops, you guys book photo walks, gangbusters. Look how many there are tonight. My photo, my workshop the next two days sold out like 20 some odd people, it's insane. Photo walk we did last night, sold out, everything sold out. Beyond grateful, not bragging, I'm telling you, it works. And don't expect it to come overnight. That's the other problem, people just, they expect instantaneous success. Because you see, the, the hardest part about YouTube is you see some idiot pulling pranks on his friend and he has two trillion views. And this video that you go out and film and you put time, money, effort, Maddie creates a costume, we go and shoot, and it has 10, 20, 30,000 views. Yeah, it's good, but it's not like some doofus running and you know, getting hit by a car and all of a sudden it's, he's got a million views. But again, that's not sustainable. It's not residual. He may have one or two videos that go viral. He's not going to build a business off that. All these kids who built you know, YouTube channels off of Minecraft, they're stupid. If I were to build a video game channel, I'd build it off of multiple platforms, multiple games, because every game will become obsolete. So always be thinking about that. Always be thinking about business. Always be thinking about making money. And you have to ask yourself, how do you not become obsolete? Because a lot of photographers do that. A lot of photographers do that. And they, they rest on their laurels or they, you know, Rod, how many times do we talk a week, dude? Four or five. Four or five. That's the, that's the managing director of all of Rotolite back there, right? He and I are constantly talking to each other. We're strategizing. We do not rest. We are constantly thinking about business. And I, he, I think he would agree that we consider each other very, very dear friends. But I never take that relationship for granted and say, oh, well, Rod will never fire me. He may not ever fire me. He could certainly stop using me. Well, that's what they've done to other photographers, is that the, the other photographers, well, that's the job's too small for me. I'm not doing it. Well, they're stupid. They're stupid. Because I, I've said it time and time again, but it's super true, guys. These cell phones that we have, they are a big threat to your business, and if you don't think they are, you're fooling yourself. They are closing the gap. So if you don't practice your skills, practice your lighting, practice your business skills, there's, in New York, 10 million people, right? How many picture takers are there? 10 million. What really makes your photography that different, that award-winning, that epic? 
Either it is, or you're really good at your business skills, or hopefully both. The minute you underestimate your competition is when they just pass you on by. And that is beyond true. So like I said earlier, hustle, there's no job. Guys, it, I'm a Sony artisan, very well-known photographer, very grateful to be here. If I had no business and somebody called me up and said, we're gonna pay you $750 to do a wedding. I'm a Sony artisan, are you kidding me? How rude, right? No, I literally say, okay, do I wanna make $750 or do I have a better opportunity? If I have a better opportunity, I'll take it. If not, I'll take your money. Now, would I really shoot a wedding for $750 if I was broke? Yeah, I would. I think it takes that kind of hunger for you to get it. You know, I, I, real quick, I had a bride come to me at a bridal fair years ago. She goes, I just gotta tell you, I love your work, I could never afford you. I said, really? How much money do you have? Don't ever be afraid to ask them that. <laughs> no, I say it all the time. How much money do you have? What's your budget? I don't have a budget. Okay, so if you pay me 20 grand, you'd be good. Oh, I couldn't pay you 20 grand. Okay, so you pay me 10 grand, you'd be good. I can't pay you 10 grand. Finally, I did this process. I said, well, 3,500. And finally she goes, oh yeah, I guess we could do 3,500. Okay, great. So your budget's 3,500. So you do have a budget. Well, I didn't think about it, but I guess I do. Okay, perfect. If you get married on a Wednesday in January, I'll do your wedding for 3,500 bucks. Okay, I'll be back. This is at the Queen Mary in, uh, in uh, Southern California, Long Beach. She comes back an hour later with a signed contract for the Queen Mary for like Wednesday, January 23rd. This is the video up on YouTube of this wedding. She hands it over, she goes, you, you better keep your word because I just booked a Wednesday in January. <clears throat> Kept my word, wrote her up a contract, signed it, shot the wedding. When am I gonna make $3,500 on a Wednesday in January? <laughs> I'm not. Oh, you're this big photographer. I don't know, $3,500 sounds kind of nice. Could certainly buy me a new A7R III. So wait a minute, I'll work one day, and yes, I know, the pre-calls, bridal shoots, editing, I got it. I understand it, I've done hundreds of weddings, I get it. But I look at it that way. Okay, so I work on a Wednesday and I buy myself a new camera. See, because almost all of you, if someone walked up and said, hey, if, I'll give you this A7R III if you shoot a wedding, how much of you would say yes? <laughs> but you don't think about it that way. You don't. You think, oh, well, this is what I normally charge. Who cares what you normally charge? Do you want to make money or not? Do you want to make money or not? And here's the other thing, because hotels, my hotel background goes into yield management and yielding revenue, right? In hotels, we would take, if we have a house, and we call it the house, if our house has 1,000 rooms, the very first thing hotel companies do is they sell a base rate. And they'll book 20% of their rooms and they'll sell them to airline crews. So if you guys ever say airline crews going through, that's what they're doing. And they never check the rooms out because they'll get 200 or 20% of their, of their revenue will be based off of those airline rooms. They fill up that part. So if you guys look at it from that perspective as well, and if you're worried, oh, if this person knows I shot a wedding for $3,500, everyone's gonna know, nobody's gonna know. Nobody. I'll be, yeah, yeah. Hey, if they want to book me every Wednesday for $3,500 and then on Saturday I'm charging $18,000, that's fine by me. But then it gets into a matter of how much business do you want to do. But the point is, don't be afraid of, of work. I learned that from my dad. My dad was a, had two master's degrees and was a school teacher. And when, in the, you know, school teachers don't make a lot of money. And then he became a principal and everything else. But we had a big family. Money was tight. My dad, nothing was beneath him. He would do any job. He was a farm boy. And he would turn around. And every, every summer, uh, he bought a rototiller. And he would go and rototill people's yards. He'd do it for 50 bucks. Just to make rent or just to make, buy groceries or whatever it is. So when I watch that, I'm like, there's nothing I won't do. I'll work. Hey! Really? You're still there? Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you guys want to continue this madness online, go to patreon.com slash Photography, and you guys can watch this. Watch me, watch me edit, watch me shoot.
watch me pretty much do anything. Well, not anything, but you get my point. And we can have a fantastic time learning online from anywhere in the world. If you guys want to see all of this craziness in person, if you're really crazy enough to do that, go to jasonlinear.com and look up upcoming events or go to jasonlinear.com slash register and you'll be able to see me live and in person and uh, you'll probably be a little crazier for it. Thanks guys. Can't wait to see you. I love you. Bye.